for joining today. I'm Cameron Motovaslani, a software engineer here at Armory, and today I want to talk about plugins and Spinnaker. So the plugin framework we've chosen for Spinnaker is PF4J, otherwise known as the plugin framework for Java. And we're going to be focusing on a one main way of extending Spinnaker and adding additional functionality, um, and that is via extension points. So you can add different types of plugins, but extension points are a PF4J concept that provide a lot of nice niceties around developing plugins. So extension points are essentially telling PF4J that an interface or an abstract class is able to be modified or have additional functionality added to it via a plugin. Today we're going to be focusing on Orca and adding a back, uh, adding a new custom stage to a Spinnaker installation. We've chosen to focus on stages because that's how most users interact with pipeline creation and with Spinnaker itself. So we've added this class, this interface, to Orca, and that is what we call simple stage. So we created this to lower the barrier of, barrier of entry to creating native Spinnaker stages via a plugin. As you can see, this interface extends the extension point class and contains two methods, execute and get name. These are the only methods you will have to implement in your plugin in order to create a uh, stage within Spinnaker. The getName function will signify the, the name of the stage so that when you reference it in a pipeline, you would reference the name in this getName function. The execute function here will run when the stage is called and will run whatever code you have there. So let's let's take a look at what this is doing. We'll talk a bit more about the simple stage input and output as we look at the plugin itself. One more thing to note is the location of simple stage. It's under the Orca API package in Orca. So these extension points are going to be located in the service slash service dash API directory of a project. Cool. So let's take a look at some examples. We have the Spinnaker plugin examples project that I would encourage you to take to take a look at. This PF4J stage plugin is the plugin we're going to be focusing on today. So let's take a look. Cool. So I, I do recommend reading the readme. However, we'll be talking, it, it discusses build and delivery, and we'll be discussing those in a, in a later video. So this is the structure of a, of a plugin. Each microservice has its own package containing the code that needs to go onto that microservice. Slightly confusing, but in our case, we're going to be adding some code to Orca, so we're going to create a directory with Orca in the name. So let's take a look. So just like any other Java project, uh, you check out the, the module, look at your source main, and dig down into where your code's at. So as you can see, we have five files here that define a few different a few different things for a plugin. Let's take a look at the random weight plugin. Why do we call it random weight, you ask? Well, this plugin will wait for a, a random amount of time. It's a pretty pointless plugin. However, it exercises the PF4J framework and shows off how to create a plugin. So when Orca starts up, it will call this start function for every plugin that is enabled. As you can see here, we log to say that this plugin has started, 
and we log to say when it has stopped. This is really helpful for ensuring that your plugin is being loaded into a uh, service. You can do more things here, such as initialize, do initialization, um, call out to other services, etc. The world is your oyster. The bulk of the plugin, however, exists down here in the random wait stage. As you can see, it imp implements simple stage. This is Kotlin, so this is the uh, implements uh, operator. So you can see we've overrided the get names function and it returns random weight. So every time you want to use this stage in a pipeline, you would refer to it via random weight. If you check out Brandon's video, you can see how to create a front end part for the same plugin. So no JSON necessary. The bulk of the, the plugin exists in this execute method. So you take a stage input, some input from the, the stage itself, which as you can see is a nether class that is in Orca. So let's go back and look at Orca real quick. So you can see here in Orca's API, in simple stage, we there's simple stage input, simple stage input, simple stage output, and simple stage status. These are all needed in order to create a plugin. Your stage has both an input and an output. Notice that you define both the output and context for the simple stage output, as well as including a status. And in the input, you define a input. For the simple stage status, these are statuses that are available to your plugin. When your stage runs, it can either uh, be terminal, which is failed, running, mean, which means it's currently running, succeeded, which means the, the stage passed successfully, or not started. So let's see how these are used. Awesome. In our plugin, we can see that we have included the random weight input class as a parameter to the execute method. Let's take a look at that class. Random weight input is just a data class in Kotlin. And all, all this is saying is there is a variable max wait time that's an int. So this is a class with a max wait time int that contains getters and setters. This is what the front end will be passing to the stage in order for the stage to run. And the front end would pass a JSON containing max wait time and some integer value. Going back to the plugin. We see the input is a simple stage input, but the output is a simple stage output. So let's take a look at the output. Similar to the input, the output contains one variable that's called time to wait. This is the time that was actually, uh, that the stage actually slept for, or waited rather. There's also this context object, which is not heavily used within simple stage. Uh, in this case, we, we pass the max wait time. Well, and again, if we take a look at the config, this is configuration for the plugin itself. It's saying that there is a default max wait time that must be supplied. Cool, so let's take a look at 
our random weight plugin. So this is where the random weight config has been passed in uh, to our random weight stage. There's only one configuration per stage. That is to say, you can define a max default max wait time for this random weight stage, and that will be used in in case there's no um, max wait time set. So in our execute method down here, we get an input which contains the max wait time, and we're going to be returning it output. So we get a random object and essentially sleep for the uh, between zero and the, the max wait time. So we do the sleep here and log if there's an error. The, we set up the output and set the status to succeeded. And then return the output. And that's, that's all there is. The output here will then be added to the pipeline execution on the Spinnaker UI. Cool, so let's take a look at how to use this. Over here in Orca, we've got the Orca YAML. I've added some configuration values down here that we can find in the readme of the PF4J stage plugin. Great. So in, in Orca, we can see that we have the simple stage. Um, awesome. But now I have a plugin and I'm trying to develop it. How do I test my plugin to make sure it works with this simple stage? Well, we've got an answer for that. There's instructions down here at the bottom of the PF4J stage plugin that tells you how to build um, Orca with your plugin so that you can debug into your plugin code. In another video, we'll be talking a bit about this release bundle. However, for, for the, our purposes, we'll just run this command and it will produce a generated, um, it will produce a build, a release bundle. So I've already done that, and I have copied the, the plugin ref file into my plugins directory. So let me show you where that exists. So this is Orca in IntelliJ, and in the Orca module, there is a plugins directory that contains the output from the release bundle and all I've done is moved it over here. What this is showing is the location of my plugin on my local host. As you can see, there's a bunch of jars here and a few main classes. There's also some libraries and a, a plugins path. Orca will use this information to allow me to debug into my plugin. What I've done earlier was I at, went to this Gradle tab, hit the plus sign, and I added my PF4J stage plugin project. I selected the folder and just hit open and re-imported Gradle and PF4, my, my plugin appeared here. It's also here in the projects view. And what I did was I went into the random weight plugin and put a breakpoint here in the start method. So when we run Orca, I should get a breakpoint here. In order to stop there with the, the breakpoint, go to your configurations and you should be running main. You do need to add the VM options provided in the README for the PF4J stage plugin. You also need to add build projects before launch. That will build your project and allow you to debug into the plugin code itself. Cool, so let's, let's do this, let's run it.
All right, so Orca is starting up. And as we can see, I'm in my plugin code and have hit a breakpoint right here at the start. If we take a look at the output log, so we can see that PF4J is running in development mode, and that's based on the VM options we provided. There's no remote repositories defined because we did not define any. And in fact, we want to use our, our local files. And it was able to find the Armory Wait plugin. Um, we did not provide a version, so it's unspecified. And it called the start method there, which is how we ended up in this uh, debug. That's it for now. Um, expect a few more videos from us in terms of build and build, release, and delivery. Thank you very much.